So welcome everybody. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Great. Um, my name is uh, Stas Holofsky. I'm the uh, co-chair of the Visual and Media Arts Department here at Long Beach City College. Um, welcome to our keynote uh, uh, visiting artist lecture tonight, uh, which is uh, Masami Teraoka, as you all know. Um, this uh, lecture was made possible by a student equity grant that we received. And some of you have been to uh, a few of our talks already. We've had uh, Edgar Arsenault, we've had Effie Brown, we've had Allison Saar, uh, Ken Gonzalez Day. Um, I'm sure I'm leaving somebody out, but some, some impressive, uh, impressive folks that have come through and talked to us about their work and their practice. Uh, as part of the grant, we uh, had the opportunity to really find someone making work uh, out there in the world and bring them here uh, to the college. And we obviously had plenty of discussions about who that could be. Uh, as we all know, there are lots of people that are making work, that are making important work and dynamic work and relevant work. But um, as we were talking about who to invite, one person kept coming up and we really are thrilled to have Masami uh, fly from Hawaii be here uh, to talk to us about his practice. And, uh, it's an amazing thing. We should uh, all hope that we're making important work. Uh, I don't know how Masami, I think you're, I'm going to guess that you're 80? 80. 80. Uh, so, of course. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, is this better? Okay. Okay, great, great. Okay, now you can hear me. All right. I'm not going to repeat everything I just said. Uh, but what, where I was going was just that I, I certainly, I, I think we can all hope that when we're 80 that we're making, you know, work and, and as vigorously creative as Masami has been. So uh, rather than speaking off the cuff, um, I'm going to read uh, a little bit about Masami because there's so much that there's no way I could possibly remember this. So let me tell you a little bit about Masami, and, and he'll take it from there. So, uh, Masami Teroka was born in 1936 and is a Japanese-American contemporary artist. Uh, his work includes Yukio-e influenced woodcuts and paintings. Um, he was born in the town of Onomichi in Hiroshima Prefecture, and, and he studied uh, from 1954 to 59 at the uh, Kansei Gakuen University in Kobe, Japan, where he received his BFA in aesthetics. He moved to the United States in 1961, and from 64 to 68, attended the Otis Art Institute, now known as the Otis College of Art and Design in Los Angeles, where he received his BFA and MFA. His early work consisted primarily of watercolor paintings and prints that mimic the flat, bold qualities of Japanese woodblock prints. These paintings, done after his arrival in the U.S., often featured the collision of two cultures. Series such as McDonald's Hamburgers Invading Japan and 31 Flavors Invading Japan characterize themes in the work in this time period. These pieces blend reality with fantasy, humor, and commentary, history with the present. In the 80s, Teraoka shifted palette and scale to depict AIDS as a subject transforming his ukiyo-e derived paintings into a darker realm. Since the late 1990s, he has been producing large-scale narrative paintings addressing social and political issues, especially abuse in the Catholic Church. These large-scale paintings are inspired by well-known Renaissance paintings rather than by Japanese woodblock prints. Taroka has been the subject of more than 70 solo exhibitions, many of which have traveled extensively, including those organized by the Whitney Museum of American Art in 1980, the Contemporary Museum Honolulu, uh, now known as the Honolulu Museum of Art at Spalding House in 1988, and the Yale University Art Gallery in 1998. Also, in 96, he was featured in a solo exhibition at the Arthur M. Sackler Gallery, Smithsonian Institution, and in 1997 at the Asian uh, Art Museum in San Francisco. His work is in more than 50 public collections worldwide, including the Fine Arts Museum of San Francisco, the Asian Art Museum of San Francisco, the Smithsonian Art Museum in Washington, D.C., the Honolulu Museum of Art, 
the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, the Met in New York, the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C., the Tate Modern in London, the Queensland uh, in Brisbane, Australia, the Gallery of Modern Art in Scotland and Glasgow, the Singapore Art Museum, the list goes on and on. So um, his work is, needless to say, uh, represented in collections around the world. Um, Masami has twice been honored by the American Academy of Arts and Letters in New York and received two fellowships from the National Endowment for the Arts. His first comprehensive monograph, um, or the first comp comprehensive monograph on the artist was published in 2007. Um, Masami has given lectures at the Whitney Museum of American Art, the Asian Society, and the Institute of Fine Arts at NYU and Brown University, among many others, and has received a number of grants, uh, number of grants and awards. He has also completed numerous commission pieces, including a painting, Samurai Businessman, for the cover of Time Magazine, and Green Rabbit Island for the State Foundation for the Arts and Culture in Honolulu. He's represented by Catherine Clark Gallery in San Francisco since 1997, and here in Los Angeles, if you ever want to see his work um, in person, it, you could see it at the Samuel Freeman Gallery, which is in Culver City. Um, Masami also has a show that's coming up at Cal State Fullerton uh, in November, so you can actually see some work, not projected, but the actual work in Cal State Fullerton. And then a year from now, uh, also at the Crocker Art Museum. So that, which is also not that far, it's certainly, um, you know, you can, you can make your way there. So um, finally, before I introduce, uh, uh, before Masami comes to, to speak, I, I also want to mention that some of you may or may not know this, but Adam Teraoka, who teaches here and is also um, our sculpture tech, um, is Masami's son, so, and an incredible artist himself, so there's a, a kind of generational situation happening as well, so we're, we're thrilled on many reasons, and uh, Eve, who's standing there in the pink dress, will be, uh, who is Masami's daughter, will be documenting uh, the event, <laughs> in case you're wondering. All right, Masami, um, welcome. So much. Th 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 thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful introduction, and the thank you for you to come out here. Some people will drive from, you know, uh, north and south and east, west and the third, three hours probably. But I, I really appreciate it. And uh, tonight I'm going to uh, uh, thank my um, son and daughter, and then my, uh, uh, well, actually, Eve's mama, Linda. Uh, she is not here, but uh, uh, they are all supportive. And uh, uh, actually, if Adam had not initially started a uh, gold leaf uh, triptych, I would never be being able to actually continue or even come up with the idea. So he initially started a gold leaf uh, frame, and then um, I. I also asked uh, David Perry, who has uh, uh, worked with uh, uh, triptych, gold leaf triptychs. So I call them like a LA uh, gold leaf uh, team. And thank you so much. If, if you didn't do that, I don't think I can show all these wonderful you know, triptych pieces at all. I mean, that's in incredibly impossible. So thank you so much. <laughs> and then, uh, actually, it took, it took a long time for me to uh, evolve this far, but I spent about 80 years. Uh, uh, it, it, it's a long sort of stor story. I don't know if I can make it short. <laughs> um, I, like to, I like to start moving into um, uh, evolution of my work. And uh, when I did this, I was um, second year of Otis Art Institute, 1968. And uh, I, I've been always, you know, pretty much interested in human sexuality because I feel that um, uh, life in, on Earth is basically coming from a, 
uh, male and female uh, get together and then they fell in love with each other and then they deliver a baby. So, you know, it's basically, it's important <laughs> part of, you know, evolution. So, I was ex uh, actually exploring uh, human sexuality even I was uh, way back in uh, 1968, and um, oh, I'm I just, where did I go? <laughs> oh, okay, so this is a sculpture, and um, uh, the diameter is about three inches, and then the length is about 29 inches. And I was uh, about to, uh, uh, finished Otis Art Institute when I was uh, working on this and then oh I, I, I went the wrong place oh, oh, wait a minute <laughs> that's not written in the script but uh, uh, here is a round uh, pyramid so actually it's part of the uh, sexuality which I feel like really tactile and then very uh, sexy and then during the um, time when I was producing these uh, fiberglass and mezzan sculpture um, LA, LA people, I mean LA artists were into uh, minimal art and then plastic uh, resin kind of sculpture and, and then uh, meantime I was working on you know almost like a personally interpretive human sexuality but still pretty abstract. And um, this one is called, uh, oh, yeah, male and, male and female form. And um, uh, it's about, uh, let's see, eight inches by eight inches by perhaps, uh, oh, okay, oh, 24 inches. So, um, uh, this is another uh, uh, version of human sexuality, and uh, if I don't explain anything to you, you would not ever even suspect this is not lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> this is American. Uh, <laughs> okay, very important part of woman's figure. That's what I think. And this is. Uh, I felt like a <laughs> okay. American women in those you know during the '60s, they were totally out there, and I wanted to express you know how liberated American women are, and I said, how can I express this you know abstract way, not really pinpointed you know human sexuality or anatomically uh, 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 expressed terms. So I tried to avoid it actual uh, word. So I would like to sort of guess what I was thinking. So the piece was actually meant to be touched and feel. And so the, the title indicates man-made, which means some you know, sexuality implication, implication. And then also around that, time I was producing, 1968, uh, everybody was going for uh, almost like a uh, anti-manual, manually made uh, art. But I'm, I'm, I'm um, especially emphasizing the opposite also could exist. So that was my sort of like a political statement. So I call it man-made. And then um, I had another sort of phase, which is a combination of Japanese uh, traditional sort of thinking of three-dimensional thing. And um, I introduced uh, uh, McDonald's hamburgers, sort of iconic images here. But then um, it's a Japanese shunga tradition. So if you If you um, crank this um, machine, then you can see the um, uh, shunga 
like in a scroll form. And um, uh, Japanese artists have done a lot of uh, erotic uh, series, and you know Japan has uh, this uh, particular history of royal family who hires uh, the most um, uh, skillful artist in in their time, and then uh, royal family and then courtesan uh, would be surrounded by uh, erotic image uh, screens. And so it's, it's part of uh, Japanese culture that I'm still sort of like, uh, you know, to, um, uh, how can I say? Uh, it's part of an ingrained sort of like a cultural attitude in, inside of me. And not like a Catholic church who, 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 um, uh, who have a different point of view. And, um, okay, uh, I, I never really understood that women could uh, masturbate. And, uh, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, definitely I didn't know. I mean, until I became, you know, 35 years old, 60 years old, you know. I said, wow, really? <laughs> then, then that, you know, culturally, I have to really, you know, visually express it, see how it will come out. So that was part of the whole composition here. And um, let me see. Uh, do you, this is, um, it's called um, Venice Nude Beach, and <laughs> woman and bicycle. And actually, uh, we are staying in Venice Beach uh, area. And uh, we just took a walk this afternoon, and I showed Eve how, you know, how the beach looks like. Uh, it used to look like this. and then, so, and I explained to them, I, I did a composition, uh, woman and a bicycle. And so, I, so I'm going to show it to you Eve, later. Oh. And, okay, so oh, now when I did, I did this composition, uh, it could be 1975, and the uh, title of this composition is called New Views of Mount Fuji. And then the subtitle is La Brea Tarpet. And that time, uh, during those 1975, uh, Japanese businessman uh, uh, came to LA. And when, whenever they come to the States, they, they are looking for some uh, merchandise that they want to bring back to Japan and then make uh, uh, profit. So I started thinking, if I were a Japanese businessman visiting uh, Los Angeles, I would invest, you know, to buy a Labria Tarpet and then bring it back to Japan and then open like a Disneyland entertainment place. <laughs> so, and then I couldn't believe nobody thought about that idea. <laughs> so anyway, so that, that's, that's what this it's all about the new views of Mount Fuji could have, you know, uh, La Brea Tarpet series in, in Japan and they can have uh, entertainment place from Kyushu Island to Hokkaido Island and the mainland and that could be interesting place. But anyway, um, next is uh, McDonald's hamburgers invade in Japan. This is a watercolor composition and uh, uh, what I was thinking in terms of uh, cultural implication was that, um, okay, I'm not too keen about McDonald's hamburgers, hamburgers taste at all. And I thought it's a tasteless. And in fact, the reason was um, my uh, college uh, friends said, Masami, I'll pick you up uh, so and so evening and then I'll cook you um, hamburgers. And then her hamburgers turned out to be really good. So if, you know, McDonald's is trying to sell hamburgers, they should sell good hamburgers, not really, you know, tasteless hamburgers. So, so this is what I, you know, I was trying to say. And, and then so, uh, sort of like, a ironical sort of uh, statements is here, 
a bamboo broom is not really happy with the hamburgers on the ground. <laughs> and uh, 31 flavors ice cream was also embedded in Japan uh, around that time the hamburgers were becoming so popular in Japan. And then as far as you know, ice cream, 31 flavors concerned, I thought it's pretty good. <laughs> and and the, the woman who is eating this um, ice cream is a friend of mine. And uh, I couldn't believe, you know, how American uh, women eat ice cream. I said, this is a cultural thing. I want to paint. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, but Japanese wouldn't eat ice cream like the way American woman would eat ice cream. But if you go to Japan now, probably Japanese are all trying to, you know, look like American woman, so they might eat different style now, though. Uh, 31 flavors uh, invade in Japan, and uh, uh, I forgot the subtitle. Oh, French vanilla. And uh, uh, this one has a lot of uh, personal cultural uh, implication. I grew up in Japanese uh, kimono fabric store, which my granddad uh, had started. And uh, the time when uh, World War II was over, uh, my dad had to start a kimono store again. But the time has changed because all Western clothing came into Japan. And so actually, you know, Japanese went, went for uh, much, much cheaper uh, dressing or clothing, and the kimono became very expensive uh, 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 robes or clothes. So that actually, if I'm, I'm, I'm not mistaken, I was not really too keen about this, you know, Levi's invading Japan. But anyway, it's, it's a part of uh, cultural change I, I had experienced directly. So a lot of Japanese people abandoned kimono. Wearing kimono is not, no longer you know, aff affordable. And uh, so uh, I, I paint kimonos, but there's also a personal uh, uh, reason that I wanted to have you know, the chance to keep that you know, kimono tradition. Um, if I were able to invite my uh, master, uh, uh, Kunisada, and she, oh, he comes to uh, Hawaii to depict, or oh, not depict, oh, to depict a tropical fish. And in the meantime, also he was interested in um, depicting uh, eclipse. But there's, you know, Japanese, no, American woman just uh, appeared from the water, and then he said, wow, I was painting fish, but I'm more interested in this woman's moon view. So, <laughs> anyway, anyway, so that was my narrative, you know. And um, now when I, I did this composition, I was referring to uh, Santa Monica Beach uh, pollution. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the time when I was uh, painting this uh, painting, uh, I think six uh, lifeguard got cancer because of the polluted uh, ocean. Am I correct? I don't know if you remember this. Uh, so anyway, I, uh, so in, in my Sushi, sushi um, series, Ghost Sushi series, uh, I wanted to say, you know, okay, this is the alert for you, and if you eat uh, fish sushi, you might get uh, pollution from eating raw fish. So that was a part of the uh, environmental issue that I, I, I wanted to uh, record. Uh, this is mother and child, and uh, her mother's uh, child contracted AIDS. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure, but um, uh, let's see. Nina Simone, does that sound familiar to you? Yes. Okay. She 
and I met uh, her in New York, that restaurant, and she brought her one-year-old baby. And this, this baby is so beautiful. And I, but then, you know, while we were eating dinner, having dinner, this baby's um, head fall, keep, kept falling backward. And so I said, why does she do that? And she said, Asami, actually, you know, my, uh, my daughter contracted AIDS. And then this was, a, you know, early 80s. And nobody really knew exactly what the AIDS means. And so I said, I, I really got, got to paint this. You know, this story is so important. So uh, I actually, my inspiration coming from her, you know, real story actually inspired this image. And uh, this, this, this is a San Francisco, you no, know, Museum of San Francisco it's a collection. Uh, this is also, it's a part of an AIDS series, and uh, AIDS virus is getting even worse and worse, stronger and stronger. Nobody knows how to handle this uh, plague, so I wanted to have a, a huge sort of a theatrical composition. And uh, Linda is in this, oh, Linda is, Linda is here. Uh, she, she's trying to contain a uh, virus. This is a uh, venomous virus. And the uh, doctor, I think, uh, general, general Health, uh, Coop, 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 do you remember um, him? I forgot his title, but that, uh, that is him. And he said, yeah, let's, let's get really be realistic. We we could we should use condom, and uh, the time when I was uh, painting condom, I think media and the government people uh, uh, didn't want to mention condoms. So I said, well, well, let's get real, you know, re be be realist realistic, and then you know we need to use condoms. So that was part of my sort of like. Uh, 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 statement um, politically, and um, this is a age series geisha in bath, and geisha. I thought a geisha would be the first sort of like a front line when AIDS is coming from uh, America to Japan, and then she said, "Yeah, I'm going to use my." Uh, condom. It's because I'm supposed to see my boyfriend and then when she took a glance of the condom and the condom said, uh, this is the import size. And then she said, well, I cannot use this condom because my boyfriend is Japanese. <laughs> I, I, I actually, you know, you wouldn't believe it, but uh, during this time, I I heard a uh, Japanese company trying to sell, Im export a uh, Japanese condom to American uh, uh, market. And then American man said, these are too small. <laughs> so, so actually, that company went out of business. <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm not really joking, that's really true. <laughs> So I said, yeah, yeah, okay, this is a very cultural thing. So I recorded. <laughs> and uh, this one is uh, when I was at uh, art resident, artist residence in, uh, in Victoria College of Arts in Melbourne, and uh, I painted the size is about nine feet or seven feet. And uh, I was concerned that doctors, AIDS doctors in San Francisco, this is a woman, I think she's the first person who asserted that, or in, I know, in, I mean, in, insisted that uh, doctors should be wearing uh, protection, any sort of a protective mask or anything uh, available or it should be available. So 
that whole you know, uh, idea of uh, her vision actually inspired my com um, composition. And uh, back to Japanese erotica sort of series, uh, I always sort of wanted to take, take off from my, uh, my mentor, uh, Hokusai's uh, Pearl Diver and Octopus. And um, uh, I, I always wanted to reinterpret inter that conventional theme. Uh, this is also the uh, same you know, theme that I wanted to update. So she is you know, having a sexual relationship and the octopus is a, uh, she doesn't have, any, she or he doesn't have any sort of national identity. It's an octopus. <laughs> anyway. Actually, when I, I had a, a lecture in uh, e University of uh, New York, New, University of New York, a NYU, NYU, and then this um, actually teacher, I said, Masami, so what is, what's the nationality of the octopus? <laughs> and said, oh, I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Why nationality even matters with the octopus, I thought. <laughs> so actually what I was going to say is that if, you know, uh, you, you need to be very, very careful about uh, contracting AIDS, you really need to have, uh, you know, seven or eight condoms. So you have to be ready. So this is, octopus is using condoms. And also, women or Sarah, is using a uh, woman condom. I don't know if you even know there's a woman condom. I wanted you to raise a hand. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I don't think everyone know, but you, you, you see, yeah? So, okay, everybody knew about a uh, woman's condom. And uh, tattoo in Japanese culture is still uh, they are like ancient con concept. So in Japan today, uh, uh, tattooed people cannot really come into public bath. That's a that's a general uh, attitude in Japan, which is ama which uh, amazed me because uh, uh, a lot of Japanese uh, young Japanese are uh, also wearing tattoos these days, but still public bath something that very tra traditional uh, institution or c concept uh, people still, they think that tattoos are like only gangsters symbolism. Uh, so this piece is actually transition from between uh, watercolor to uh, uh, oil painting eventually. And uh, my sort of thinking is like, Okay, I've done a lot of uh, hard line, uh, contour line uh, painting, and then when I wanted to uh, invent a new vocabulary, I went to opposite way, that I erased uh, all hard line, and um, I switched to almost no contour line, but, you know, soft uh, line. So, all, uh, I think that um, within my own career, I, I have rebelled against what I have established, sort of. And that, that's the, one of the sort of like way that I, I have felt that uh, it would keep my you know, um, mental uh, attitude uh, lively. So if I feel I have accomplished everything already too much and then get so, so um, comfortable, I wouldn't be feeling too good. So I feel like I want to keep you know, um, inventing another phase and challenging. So um, I shall see uh, how 